Back on the 64th floor, Pascual had no idea what was going on, so he called home. His wife Louise was in bed resting. By that time, she was seven months pregnant. I said, Louise, I said, you know, please, I'm okay. Don't be alarmed. Don't be worried. I said, I'm perfectly fine. She's like, what's the matter? What's the matter? What you know, right away, as soon as I say that, it's, you know, something's wrong. I said, I'm okay. I said, just do me a favor. I said, just put the television on and just tell me what you see. I knew that it was his building as opposed to the South Tower because his had the antenna on top. And I just said, oh, my God, Pasquale, your building is on fire. That was a clip from the new documentary, oh The 9-11 Surfer, which debuts tonight on the Discovery Channel. Joining us now on set is Pasquale Bazelli, who survived the terror attacks 11 years ago today. He and his wife, Louise, also here with us, have written the book, We All Fall Down. Still looking mm. for a publisher, I understand. It's an incredible story. I'm sure somebody's going to wow. pick it up after they, they hear this. It's so great to have you both here with us. Thanks for coming in. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Pasquale, set the stage a little bit. Uh, you were engineer for the Port Authority. Walk us through the early stages of that morning for you? Um, went through my normal routine, uh, getting up in the morning. My wife was uh, still sleeping, uh, very, very pregnant <laughs> at the time. Um, and uh, I remember the night before, I was watching Monday Night Football, and uh, I, just, I got up maybe a little bit later than I should have. Um, so I ended up getting to, into work a little later. And because of that, I was actually in the elevator going to the 64th floor, the express elevator, and that's when I first felt the impact from the first plane hit in the North Tower. So I was actually in the elevator at the time. Uh, mm. And a lot of people will ask, and I know Louise was asking you that day, why did you stay in the building so long? I think it was 80 minutes after impact before you decided it was time to go down. Why did you stay? Correct. Um, everyone asked me that question. Uh, it's a lot of factors. Um, once I finally reached the floor, everyone who decided to evacuate had evacuated already. Um, so it was myself and the gentleman in the elevator, Bill, who joined 14 others on the floor, and there were 16 of us total. They had decided to stay. Um, uh, my boss at the time had called down, uh, down to the security desk, and he was told to stay and wait till help arrives. Uh, there was thought that let's keep the stairway clear, uh, because I, I was also in a 93 bombing, uh, and I, I I had to evacuate at that time, and, the, and the, the, they correct a lot of deficiencies, but the stairs at that time acted like chimneys, so they were filled with smoke. So some people were hesitant uh, leaving until they knew it was clear or, or safe to go down. Some people wanted to keep the stairs clear uh, so that firemen could actually reach uh, the point of impact and also allow others uh, that were injured to get by. So by staying out of the stairs, we thought it was the best thing to do until we were told to go. And honestly, not knowing that the building would ever collapse, there was no reason to, to I guess, rush or be uh, 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 you know, scared at that point. It was a well-lit, functioning office. Is, is this when you made your call to your wife? When did you, where, where were you when you made the call to your wife? Um, as soon as I reached the floor and, and I spoke to my, uh, my boss, Pat, I said, Pat, what happened? And, and, he said, I don't know, but he goes, I was knocked out of my chair. Um, yeah. I said, let me call my wife. She's at home. I don't want her seeing this. I knew, you know, the television, you know, the media, see, you know, reports things right away. So right. I said, she's going to know before I know what and, happened to And the you did. You saw the, the antenna on the top of the tower. You call him up. Did well, you say, get the hell out of there? He basically called me and woke me up. Uh, and, and he said, Louise, if you turn on the TV, let me know if you see okay. anything. And I did. And, <clears throat> excuse me, I said, Pasquale, your, your building is on fire. The top of your building is on fire. And as I sat and listened a little bit longer, I heard the newscaster say, uh, we think a plane hit the World Trade Center. Yeah. And I said, they're saying they think a plane hit. So he wanted to know where in regards to the building was it hit? Was it right. like high, low, or, right. or you know? Middle, so yeah. we, we figured that he was a little bit, he was below it, thank God. And when Louise, you, what, I was just going to ask you, when the tower eventually falls, we were just talking about this, I had the same experience with my sister-in-law. You're sitting thinking, <clears throat> you've just watched on television, your husband, mm -hmm. the father of your unborn child, die on TV. Mm -hmm. What's yeah. the feeling like and what happens for that, for you after that? Uh, that feeling was, you know, total helplessness. Uh, just total, you, I wanted to jump through the television screen. I, I just kept screaming, no, no, no. And I, I mean, I felt like my everything in my body just like drained out. And I, when it finally fell, I, I mean, I couldn't even watch anymore because I had watched... The, the, the second plane hit, and then Tower 2 come down, and then I was trying to say, you know, don't think it, it's not going to happen, and, and it did happen. And it was just, you know, I, I, I basically lost uh, my life at that point. But little did you know, 
a miracle had just taken place. Pasquale, if you can recount what happened as you're going down the stairs and everything gives way. Uh, eventually, when, when we decided to leave, it was after the South Tower had collapsed. And um, I, I think it was a good thing, but I didn't know the South Tower had collapsed because where our, our office was located was on the northwest corner. Uh, and the way the building was set up, you couldn't see the South Tower from that, from that angle. Uh, it was blocked. So we felt this rumbling, um, and we attributed it to maybe part of the, part of the building, a uh, plane or something collapsing up above. And that's when we decided to gather our things and, and start getting ready to head down. The smoke started filling in on the, on, on the floor. Uh, we entered, uh, I believe it was Stairway B, and we started making our descent down the stairs. Uh, we had... We had reached probably in the 40s and uh, encountered firemen sitting there, I mean, just exhausted, taking a break. They had all their gear on, you know, drenched with sweat. Um, I remember you know, stepping over them and between them to try to get by, and they said, just keep going. It's a clear run. Just keep going. Uh, we encountered some more firemen in the 30s. Um, one of them said, you can get off in an elevator on the, 20, on the 24th floor. Um, and we all just were resounding, everyone right away, no, you know, we're not getting into an elevator at this point. Um, and as I was going down the stairs, I remember passing and looking, 26, 25, 25, I said 24, this is where we could get off, but we're not. And it was only a couple of flights later when all of a sudden I heard this tremendous loud freight train type of noise from above. Um, the railing, the stairs started shaking violently. Uh, in that split second, I, I didn't know. I thought something was falling through the stairs. Uh, and just in order to protect myself as much as possible, I just dove into, onto the next landing. I buried myself in the, um, in, in the corner, uh, laid on the floor next to the wall, trying to protect myself from anything. Maybe it was falling. I, was, I, was, I had nowhere to run. Um, curled up in a fetal position. And uh, I just prayed at that point. That, that, uh, and as I was praying, the, the, the wall cracked and the floor gave way. And that's when I started to, to free fall, and I realized at that point, oh, my God, this is how I'm going to die. This is, this is it. You know, you always wonder how you're going to die. And first thought, oh, my God, I'm going to die. This is it. Please protect my wife, my unborn child, hope. Um, I prayed for a quick death. Um, and I, just, I stayed tucked in to a fetal position. I felt this sand blast or abrasive kind of air. Um, I was getting hit. Um, impacts. I saw flashes of light from the impacts. You know, when you, if you ever get hit with a baseball or so, you know something, or you know, punch or something, you see that, that, that flash. So I guess from the impacts of falling, I saw several flashes of light and then one bright flash. Um, and split second later, I opened up my eyes, and I was just sitting there, totally numb, looking up at blue sky. Um, then it got dark uh, from the smoke and everything, and I started to cough. I started to feel pain in my leg. And I said, I, I, I can't even believe at that point uh, that I was alive. And uh, I survived that, and was, there was nothing above me. Do you have any sense for how you fell from the 22nd floor, which is the way you've identified it? Mm -hmm. You landed on a rubble that most people think was about seven stories high. Correct. So we're talking about a 15-story free fall on, theoretically, a piece of concrete. That's why they call you the 9-11 surfer. Uh, there are people in this documentary, as the viewers will see tonight, MIT physicists who explain perhaps what might have happened, a hurricane force wind that almost lifted you up and allowed you to float down. Do you remember at all what it felt like? Do you have any idea of how you might have survived that fall? I, I remember everything. I remember the fall. Uh, I mean, every moment of that fall I remember. Um, <clears throat> so I, you know, I experienced it. And I think it's how I've been describing it that I guess the experts were able to come up with that theory. I always wondered myself, you know. So I guess, I guess it makes sense. We'll obviously see the full story uh, through your voice on Discovery, but him coming home hmm. after all of this, how do you describe that moment, seeing him again? Um, well, when I first got the phone call from him, you see him understand that our house was filled with people by 3.30 that afternoon, and I never spoke to him again, and when he called and I answered the phone and he said, Louise, it's me. And I was like, Pasquale, Pasquale, oh my God, it's Pasquale. And, and the whole house just was like an uproar and screaming. And, and, you know, I knew that if I heard his voice that even if he was missing an arm or a leg that he was alive. And uh, when he finally did come home that night, um, it was a long day. And just being there, waiting in the driveway, uh, you know, People were still over the house, and 
I couldn't wait to touch him and, and feel him and, you know, make sure it was really you and that you were really home. And, I mean, it was, it was, it was a nightmare that turned into, for us anyway, you know, it, it ended. Um, him coming home, um, what we dealt with after that uh, is another story. Hard. Yeah. Yeah. And Pasquale, you tell your story now. Why did you wait so long? Um, I feel I can I can tell the story now. Um, I did tell the story then on you know small local type things, and everybody said you have to tell your story. You have to tell your story. It's amazing. Um, it was difficult telling the story then. You know, it just the the emotions, uh, and they still are, but they were much raw. You know, very raw then. Um, and now I'm able to deal with it. I'm able to. You know, um, be happy again, and uh, you know, and, and feel the joy of life uh, yeah. again. So, I'm able to tell it. And your beautiful daughters, Hope and me, are both here with you today. We're glad you're here with them, Pasquale. Thank you so much for telling your story. We appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. For thank you. Us thank, you. Today. thank you, John. Thank you. The documentary it. is the 9/11 Surfer. It premieres tonight at eight o'clock Eastern on the Discovery Channel. And their book, co-authored by Louise, we all fall down. Pasquale and Louise, thank you. We'll be right back.